by the women's Super G. The four runners are on the course, as you can see them. Uh, the weather has really been the story, not only of uh, these last couple of days, but those that are in the ski industry in the Northeast, it's really been the story of the entire season. But with great work here by the Whiteface Mountain uh, staff, the trail crew, the jury, unfortunately, we could not race yesterday. It was the right decision, given what the weather had presented two nights ago. But here we are, with great conditions. The visibility gets a little better as we go through this morning. Earlier, a couple of hours ago, the visibility was a little bit on the flat side, but now it's much better, and the forerunners here are uh, testing out the timing. You see a, a shot of the start as the uh, athletes are getting ready. Uh, away from the Italian Thomas Della Libra, he will be one of the uh, top athletes as we take a look at the weather now. Uh, folks are riding the cloud splitter gondola up to the top of Little White Face and here is our temperature. It's really a nice day to ski, not only if you're racing, but if you're just out enjoying the sport in general recreationally. Uh, cloudy skies as you see, but visibility for the athletes good. And uh, a nice contingent of school kids out here today and hopefully this is what we will see over the course of not only the weekend, but but the next seven or eight days as uh, we work our way to the final day of competition here, January 21st, with a reserve day on the 22nd, uh, if needed. Uh, skiers are making their last minute equipment adjustments uh, with their coaches, with their reps, and then we will get this going. And uh, the combination of throughway and Draper's Drop uh, is uh, the trail that will be used here. It's 1,400 meters in length. It drops 415 meters. And I can tell you from personal experience, a lot of that 1,415, uh, 415 meter vertical drop is right at the start. This course gets everybody's attention right out of the gate. The first couple of hundred meters, you need to be really riding that outside ski, staying online, and then carrying speed into the flat. If, if you don't, then uh, you're going to be behind the eight ball once you hit that flatter section. Here's our start list. The top 15 uh, on the fist points list are uh, drawn randomly. So this was a random draw last night of the top 15. And then from 16 to 49, the end of the field, it is according to rank. Uh, so uh, we'll keep our options open. Doesn't necessarily mean that the race will be dominated by the first 15 skiers. We would expect that they would ski well, but we have certainly seen from uh, the back of the pack, things can happen. And with a course that is this firm, we have conditions that are equitable for everybody. Much better than if we had a lot of snow and soft conditions, which then literally limit the field to the top, top handful of uh, athletes. This uh, is uh, page two, if you will, of, uh, of the start list. And uh, as I said, we have uh, a total of 49 that are here uh, to compete. On Whiteface Mountain, opened in 1958. And uh, in the start gate, the first skier on course. This is the Swiss, Yannick Mani, coming right out of the start house and onto throughway. There are two intermediate timing points. Mani will set the standard that everybody will go after a little bit low, and he's going to lose a lot of time there. Uh, riding that outside skier, trying to get himself back onto the proper line. Uh, what you don't want to do is dump speed as you attempt to get onto the flat because then there's not enough momentum uh, to make you contend. But uh, we'll see how Monty recovers. This is that flatter section in between uh, the steep of throughway and the pitch of Draper's Drop. Coming into view now for the spectators down below. This is what the locals call the beach because it gets sunbaked a little bit low as he hits those last couple of gates. Mani into the finish and the opening time of a minute, 0 0.05 seconds. And so we'll, we'll see how that holds up. Uh, we have a 100, a one minute 20 second interval between and we go right to the start for the American, Spencer Wright. completing the turn above the gate that's that's optimal here get that ski pointed into the fault line he's also a little bit low at the same pace place that uh, Monty struggled and 
and you can see and hear how firm it is up there on top. The skiers got a 45 minute inspection. There's no official training in Super G. You get a 45 minute look at it and then you're in the start house ready to go. He's in the lead at the first intermediate point. And now approaching the finish. Trump there about four gates up from the bottom. And here is Spencer Wright into the finish. And he will be in second place. Monty set a good pace right off the bat. And so Monty still holds the lead. Skier number three. Yes, yeah. Thomas Della Libra, the first Italian in the field. Uh, we're two racers into this competition. And with the established uh, minute and 20 second interval, uh, this may be the cause of uh, a little delay here, but uh, will be nothing serious. We will see, maybe that gate panel there has to be fixed. Here's the replay of Wright as he crosses over to uh, change edges and then catches a little air just above the finish. There's a little bump there that'll uh, throw you a little bit. It happened to Monty, happened to Wright. And now we'll see uh, if uh, the coaches on the course radio back up and alert the skiers uh, to that so that they set up above that little jump and uh, can negotiate it perhaps a little bit better. But that's the thing about Super G, you just don't know. You get no training runs officially on it. And so sometimes it's, uh, you kind of wing it. Della Libra, 21 year old, is in the start house from Limana. He's won a couple of Super G's in Europe. The Spock Trophy, the Fiorini Trophy. So he's an accomplished skier, five podium results in national junior races, and four of those five podiums have been victories. So he knows how to get himself in contention. Yannick Mani's happy down there, sitting in first position. But we've still got 47 more skiers to go. And of course that we expect, as I said earlier, to hold up for the field. So this won't be over until it's entirely over. All right, Della Libra at the start. At the top of throughway. Good turning there in terms of uh, finishing the turn above the gate. And now, again, the same problem at that gate as the others have had, getting a little low. And now struggling to get back online. to the flat section, you need a flat ski, a good fast ski. You have to pick the right ski and you've got to be in a very compact aerodynamic position. At the top of Draper's drop now, here's Della Libra. Uh, got a little bit of air there, almost cost him. And now into the finish, Della Libra. Third place, he's almost the second off the pace that's been set early here by Yannick Mani of Switzerland. Skier number four from the Czech Republic, Tomas Klinsky. Klinsky was uh, second in a couple of fifth downhills last month, so he knows about speed. 
important to stand on that outside ski, carve the turn, especially up on those uh, steeps up there. You cannot afford to get inside and slide out. You can hear it. We don't have to tell you how slick that is up there. The sound tells you everything you need to know. Now let's see how he negotiates the jump right there. Okay, much better. Much better. Into the finish. Klinsky. Thomas Klinsky. And Klinsky, second fastest here. He goes to second place. Or, uh, excuse me, he goes to the lead as he breaks the one minute mark with a time of 59.49 seconds. So Klinsky bumps Mani down as we go immediately to Albert Ortega of Spain. A 24 year old, he did ski on the 2021 uh, Spanish World Championship team. So he knows about big events. A little bit on the inside there and he skidded, but maintained his position on the course. Now the flatter section, the transition between upper throughway and the final pitch of Draper's drop. As he comes down, Drapers, and let's see how that red gate treats him. Not bad, not bad, better than the first couple of skiers. And now to the finish, Ortega. the finish line, and he's going to take the lead with a 59.07. Your new leader to a the position of being the leader now, 59.07 seconds, and he's got a healthy lead of four tenths over Klinsky and. Monty is third. Andre Moser. As we give you rapid fire action here. Moser 21. Studies economics. He was 14th place last month in the Europa Cup Giant Slalom. We try to bring some of those turning skills to the Super G here at Whiteface Mountain. Moser has the fastest intermediate time up on top. Let's see him carry that all the way down now. That is a good sign for him if he can maintain. Here's Moser coming through. For the strike, we'll take a look at it on the clock. It's going to be good enough for second place. He goes to second place. 59.39 seconds, trailing Ortega by three tenths at this point. From the Czech Republic, David Kubesh, a 20-year-old. He was 10th last month in a fifth Super G in Austria. A little bit inside, almost cost him, but he recovered nicely. So important to ride that outside ski, especially up on those slick steeps. Now onto the flat section. This is a section that the recreational skiers love. The top and bottom, not so much. <laughs> At the top of the Draper's drop pitch. Pretty good execution there on that bump at the red gate. And he's into the finish. Put open it the red gate just to far lookers right. Keep an eye on that. That could definitely be a bit of a wrinkle thrown at the time. Waiting for an update here on the uh, scoreboard. As we move right along. Lloyd Schabla of Switzerland actually attends Westminster College in Salt Lake City. So in a sense, he's 
sort of on home soil. And he got a little bit inside there, but again, corrected himself. A 22-year-old freshman. Trying to make those uh, final turns above the gate, get those skis pointed into the fall line to accelerate. Shabla comes down. And Shabla, you will pick up. Oh, just in the second place, still having a little bit of delay here in our timing systems. Unofficially, Shabla goes to second place. The second fastest time of the day, so a great run for Lois Shabla from. Oh, so that was an outstanding he was effort. Second fastest at the first intermediate split jack, 26.94. Second fastest in the second jack at 45.28, and sure enough, down across the stripe in second as well. So your top Good five job. is Cuby, Flintston, Major, So we'll uh, Chablet, wait here a moment for uh, the Italian Major, Luca Rezzanelli. Spain with a time to beat a 59.07. Okay. <laughs> almost. As we take a look here at uh, the middle section of this course. Later today, we will present the women's Super G. And again, uh, unfortunately, we will apologize for the weather did not allow us to uh, execute these two races yesterday as originally scheduled. But the program does build in a couple of reserve days, and so it is anticipated that one of those two reserve days could be used on Monday, but we'll know for sure, most likely tonight. Meanwhile, our spectator count continues to increase. This is a holiday weekend in the United States. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Many people have the long weekend and take the opportunity to go on a little ski holiday and Lake Placid uh, benefits from that and will be quite busy these next couple of days and we're seeing some of this along the side of the course here at the finish. Take a look at the standings. And sure enough we're back here with an excellent surface for these As we wait for Rezzanelli at the start. He's one from one of our favorite places on earth, Bormio, Italy. And the ski team there at Bormio. A little bit of snow now and a breeze we're seeing now at the start. As Rezzanelli gets himself prepared to uh, tackle the upper part of Thruway and then ultimately down onto Draper's drop at the end. Here's Rezzanelli. Oh, a little low, careful. Almost missed that gate, but that is gonna cost him. That will cost him even more. And uh, he may complete this, but um, his day has pretty much been completed, and I think that's about it, unfortunately, for Luca Rezzanelli. Execution on the top of this course is, is key. Uh, you, if you get inside, if you don't ride that outside ski properly and carve some of those turns up there, or all of those turns up there, you get inside, you slide out just like that, and you unfortunately end up putting in a quick day's work. But Rezzanelli has other events. We're just getting underway. We'll have action here virtually every day over the next seven or eight days. As we go to his teammate, Giovanni Zazzaro. A member of the Italian Carabinieri. He's 23 years old.
trying to maintain his line, completing that turn, trying to above the gate and get the skis pointed downhill. And he's out. And you can almost sense there was going to be some attrition uh, here, especially on top. That surface underneath is very, very firm. Take a look at it here and And it loses a little contact there with the outside ski, and that is all she wrote today. The uh, course here at the uh, Thruway and Drapers, as it was mentioned a few nights ago at a team captain's meeting, was naturally injected. Combination of rain and freezing temperatures a couple of weeks ago did the job as we have Tanner Perkins of the United States. He's from Crested Butte, trains with the Aspen Valley Club. Okay, Perkins now onto the flatter section of this 1400 meter layout. Our leader is Albert Ortega. Intermediate time posted 45.05. Careful. Here's Perkins. He goes to the lead. Down to the hundredth of the tie. Second. It's a tie. A tie for the lead Albert Perkins between Ortega and Perkins. Sport time to the hundredth of a second, and we have a flat out tie right now. From Canada, Caden Carruthers from the University of Alaska at Anchorage. He's a freshman, hails from Calgary. Of course, they've got the Olympic course there from 88, Nikiska. And we'll get a split time here for Carruthers coming up here in just a couple of seconds. 45.52, about half a second off the pace of uh, Perkins. Now right now we have a tie for first place. Caden Carruthers, 59.49, puts him into fifth place. And that was a very nice run by the Canadian, Caden Carruthers. From the Czech Republic, Jan Zibestran is now on the course, 24 years old. 2018 Olympian. A little delay set there by the course setter, John Norton, the executive director of the New York Ski Educational Foundation. Zippa Strand, two tenths out at that first timing point. If he's got fast skis, a good aerodynamic position, he could close that gap a little bit. And we'll get another look at his standing here as we come to the second timing point. He's ahead now, 44.70, and he's gone into the lead as we have the last four or five gates left to ski here. Zibistran. Wow. Look at here and oh my word. Jan Zemestran goes into the lead by seven tenths of a second, the bumping down Ortega and leaders, Perkins. And we've got a new leader. We're... As we said, we anticipate this is going to be decided well into the start list, not early into the start list. 
as we bring Italian Luca Taranzano onto the course. 25 years old, he has one career podium result. It was last year in the Italian National Championships. Trying to stay compact. Keep that airflow out of his chest. He's half a second behind. And now comes into the last pitch. Draper's drop to the finish. And he's four tenths out. With a combined time. We'll take a look at that from Terenzano. Another Swiss skier is next. This is Eric Weiler, a 21-year-old from Brienz. Good skiing up on top. Trying to get into that tight position every chance he can. He's just a tenth out now at the first timing point. With fat skis here, good preparation on those skis and a good tuck position, he could close that gap. A little skid there. As now he comes into view of all the spectators that are gathered here along Draper's drop. Eric Weiler from Switzerland, four tenths behind in third place. That's good enough for second place, third place for Eric Weiler. And Weiler, the combined time of 58.77. I'm sure his family watching back home at their bed and breakfast in Brienz. We welcome them to the live stream. Jeremy Mathers, a 21-year-old American from the University of Utah. <laughs> Mathers as a freshman had three top tens and two top fives on the collegiate circuit. Navistrand's uh, time is the benchmark, but Mathers is off the pace by about 1.4 seconds. Mathers is into the finish here at Whiteface Mountain. 11th place, 1.67 seconds behind the leader. So Jeremy Mathers now. I spoke to Jeremy the other day here in the finish during training. He was enjoying the sun, the training conditions, and he'll have another day, no question about it. Adam Klima from the Czech Republic is now on the course. Notice he's finishing that turn above the gate. Get the skis in the fall line as best you can. Prima a second and a half behind at the first intermediate timer. Very difficult skiing at the top of the course, right out of the gate, it gets your attention. Now he's 1.7 seconds behind, a little skid there as he comes onto the pitch of Drapers. Fifteenth place, 2.7 seconds behind. As we take a look at the leaders, Jan Zabistran on top by four tenths of a second. Luca Taranzano, Eric Weiler in the battle for second and third place. 
Tanner Perkins at the moment is tied for fourth with Ortega. And we'll see if there are any other skiers here that can interrupt that. Again, the Super G is one run, winner take all. Aiden Marler, a Canadian from St. Lawrence University, 22 years old, from Ottawa. He's a sizable skier. Surprised the football team at St. Lawrence hasn't tried to recruit him, but we know that can't work. Here's Marler, who knows this hill very well. The skiing Saints train here quite often. They'll have a carnival here this winter, too. Marler on his home course finishes two seconds out. 13th place is not overjoyed with it. That's going to be the 13th. As we go to another Swiss skier, a 21 year old, this is Federico Toscano from the ski club at San Bernardino. Whoa, inside ski, inside hip, and his day is done quickly. Unfortunately, here's a look at it. Transition from the blue to the red, and a little inside, now a lot inside. Misses the blue gate there, and that's all for Toscano. Jan Zabistran from the Czech Republic. His lead time is 58.35. Will anybody left in the field go after him? American Jacob Dilling, a sophomore at the University of Colorado. He won his first NORAM race last month at Beaver Creek. So let's see if he carries that good feeling and momentum here to the World University Games at Whiteface Mountain. Again, all we have to do is ask you just listen for that natural sound to impress upon you the firmness of this surface. Twenty-three-year-old skier, Dilling. Who's another one enjoying the training conditions here the other day? Who wouldn't? A couple of days ago, with blue sky, terrific snow. Now the snow's uh, terrific, just not blue sky. Yeah, Dilling is over a second behind as he comes down Draper's pitch. And across the line. A second and a half With behind a and into 10th place. Four for Jacob Dilling. That's going to be good enough for 10th position. Come on, Hunter. Five. American Five. Hunter Eye is next here at Whiteface Mountain. Another skier from the University of Alaska at Anchorage. Oh, got to watch that left or outside ski in that turn, but he recovered. Trying to complete the turn above the gate. Hides intermediate time. 28.5 and that's already two seconds behind Zabistran's pace. Hunter I, two and a half seconds behind. He's a national all-academic team skier. And there is a lot to be said for that. He's three seconds behind, 18th place. But again, these are student athletes. And the skiing and the athletics are just part of the story. Anybody who's on the national all-academic team knows about time management. 
From Switzerland, Gianluca Bohm, 22 years old, a skier from Montana State. Bohm's intermediate time, he's eight tenths behind Zabistran. Again, the, the object of this course is to max out your speed on the steep and bring it onto the platter section. Then maintain or try to pick up ground on the flats with good equipment, properly prepared, and then execute these turns right here on the pitch of Draper's drop. To the finish, a second behind, eighth place. A good effort for Gianluca Bohm of Switzerland. From Slovakia, Jan Sanitrar attends school at the University of Svolen. He's 21 years of age, a guitar player. And see if he can strum a tune coming down here and put himself in contention. Intermediate time, he's a second and change behind. His uh, teammate Zabistran is in the lead at the moment. Probably figuring every skier that goes by, he dodges a bullet. Now over a second off the pace. He stated earlier that his goal here was a top 15. And we'll see if he's going to be successful in achieving that. He's 13th, 1.6 seconds behind. As we are almost halfway through the field here at Whiteface Mountain. From Lithuania, Andre Drukarov. 23 years of age. He moved to Tarvisio in Italy to attend the Bachman College of Ski. From Lithuania, he moved to Switzerland at the age of nine. Little struggle there on the bottom of the pitch. A pretty good run at the intermediate point though. He's less than four tenths behind. Zabistran is safe at the moment. But he's in the leader's box and not able to do anything about it other than watch and hope. Three tenths out for Drukarov. And now into the finish. Well, how does this look? Pretty good. Fourth place. About half a second behind. Drukarov showing a lot here. He's doing this, is Drukarov, as he's studying law at the University of Luzerne. From the Czech Republic, Andre Serkos. More known as a technical skier. He's giving the Super G a go here at Whiteface Mountain at the World University Games. His uh, intermediate time is 1.3 seconds behind our current leader. Circle's 22 years of age. Skiing out to Draper's Drop now. Here's Circos. No problem for Circos as he sails down Draper's Two point two seconds behind. He is in 18th place. For Andraj Circos from the Czech Republic. Still no.
next next gear here at Jack Eye from the University of Colorado. Oh, a little bit on the inside ski there, trying to recover from it. 20 years of age, started skiing at the age of two, been racing since turning six. Two and a quarter seconds behind is Reich. Deals with the red gate there on the final pitch of Drapers. To the finish. 2.8 seconds behind and in 22nd place. So a good performance from Jack Reich. From Kitzbühel, Austria, Christoph Poe, 19 years of age. Negotiated that critical red gate pretty nicely. And we'll see how he fares going from the steep onto the flatter section. Second intermediate time will come up here shortly. 45.92, he's 1.2 seconds behind our leader, Zabastran. There's a little bump at the red gate on Draper's drop. And Christoph Pohl of Austria is 15.6 seconds behind. For Christoph Pohl out of the 27th start position. There's our current leaderboard, Zabistran, four tenths ahead of Taranzano and Weiler. As we go to Francis Jeremy Lagier, he will turn 25 on Monday. And will he have an early birthday present? A little bobble there at that critical red gate. But he's in good shape. He was actually fifth in the Noram slalom race just last week at Brook Mountain in Vermont, and then made the trip over. Langier chasing Zabistran, and how is the chase going here? He's 1.1 seconds out at the second timer. And now the red bump, okay. And here's Jeremy Langier. His finish time 59.9 seconds, 59.97, he's 1.6 behind Zabastran. Finland has uh, skiers here, as you can imagine. This is Nicholas Jarvikar, 23 years old. He has an identical twin brother, Henrik. And, oh, that red gate. Gets another one. The other car, one of a little handful of skiers that just did not negotiate that one properly. You get bumped, you get thrown onto the inside ski. You get a little inside. We'll take a look at it here. Yeah, there it is. You lose contact with the outside ski and the party is pretty much over at that point. Conversation going on among the leaders down below. Here's your leaderboard, Zabastran of the Czech Republic leads by four tenths over Taranzano and Weiler. Drew Garoff, half a second behind. And Tanner Perkins, seven tenths of a second behind. A formidable leaderboard and a formidable run by Jan Zabastran. Germany's Simon Nanchev, who was eighth in the Austrian Junior Nationals last week. And he's going to try his luck on that upper steep. 
a little bit better there. Fared a little better than some of the others. Intermediate. Time. 27.76, a second and a quarter from Zavistran. Twenty-four-year-old skier is Nanchev. Well done there at that red gate. And now to the finish in a minute, 0 0.37, two seconds behind the leader in 19th place. Another Finnish skier. 23-year-old Emil Kirinen. His last Super G's were in April in Finland. So this might be some new or unfamiliar territory for Kirinen. He's 1.3 seconds behind. Coming to the finish. A minute 0 0.2, and he's 19th at this point. From Italy, David Damanti. He is from the Limoni region, and looks like he also had a short run today, missing a game. Next year, another Italian, Stefano Cordoni from the University of Genoa. He studies business economics. At the Red Gate, that's claimed some people. He struggles there. And just not maintaining proper contact with the outside ski on some of those turns. And that will scrub so much time. 1.3 seconds out already. That's Cordoni. As he makes the transition onto Drapers. A little bit low there. This final time Two is a minute, 0 0.33, two seconds behind. 0033, that's good enough to be in the top 20. From Canada, Pierre Elliott Poitra from the University of Montreal, 21 years of age. He's 2.2 seconds out at the second timer. Here's Portra, two and a half seconds in arrears, 25th place. And Zabastran picks off another one, just sitting down there in the leader's box. Austrian David Rovath from the ski club Arnold Stein. years of age. A second and a third now from Zabastran. To the finish in a minute 0 0.43 seconds. A couple of seconds uh, behind Zabastran.
a Danish skier from Denmark, Jeppe Holm Ragen, 21. 21 years of age. He had two third place finishes last year in FIS races. And now he comes to Lake Placid, Whiteface Mountain, for the World University Games. He's three seconds behind at the second timer. That's a great power guy. We've been to that screen before. It's a beautiful campus. And down in a minute, 2.15 seconds. A good run for 3.8 seconds behind Zabastrand. Here's Edward Fiala from the Czech Republic. And he also is going to have a quick day's work, unfortunately. He's up, he's okay. Colin Kress of Canada. Good to finish start off. And he made it through that red gate that's picked off a number of skiers. He represents Georgian Peaks in the province of Ontario. An intermediate time, 48.654 seconds behind Zabastran. And here he comes, his run completed in a minute, 3.54 seconds. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, as Steve Perino. From Sweden, Oscar Holmquist from Ostersund. No more as a technical skier. Oh, careful there. Almost uh, hooked the gate with his right arm, but he's okay. 2.3 seconds behind. Oh, careful. And you gotta keep your concentration and focus all the way down, especially when you get to that final steep on Draper's drop. 101.7. Uh, the reaction is rapid fire now. The interval is 45 seconds. Here's 20 year old Max Paget of France. He's had three career podium results in FIS races. Sabastran from the Czech Republic has been our leader for a long time now, and nothing's going to change here. Paget is 2.3 seconds behind. For Max Paget from France. Valentin Lauder, Dawson Yates, and Robin Sablinko. In the happy leader's the box there. racers to come down. And there he is, <laughs> the man with the plan right there, ladies Zavistran and gentlemen. Zavistran is looking pretty good right now. Taranzano second, Weiler a close third. Drew Karoff, fourth, Tanner Perkins of the U.S. Hands. in fifth place. It's a good leaderboard. And congratulations are already being uh, extended. And I'll tell you, there are seven. As we get ready for the next year, Valentin Loder of Austria he competed in the Youth Olympic Games in 2020. Looks like the snow has uh, stopped a little bit here in the last few minutes. Earlier it was uh, coming down sideways just a little bit. Nothing too serious, but now it seems much calmer. As Loader gets on to upper throughway. He was 24th in Super G at the Youth Olympic Games, which were held in Switzerland a couple of years ago, three years ago, in fact. 
A good turn there at the red gate. That's one that has uh, snake bitten a few skiers here today. The intermediate time is 28.38. That's about 1.9 seconds behind Sabastrand. We have a field of 49 skiers in this event. As Loader comes to the second timing point, 46.99 is 2.3 from the lead. The Austrian loader, a minute 1.27 and 2.9 off Zabastran's lead time. Another Montana State skier is in the start gate, Dawson Yates, a sophomore. Second intermediate time is going to be 46.27, a second and a half from Zabastran. He's from Richmond, British Columbia. 11 top 20s in his collegiate career. And he's got the 20th best time right now. From the Ukraine, of course, this is a uh, nation that's drawing a lot of uh, sentiment. Uh, they got a rousing ovation at the opening ceremony. And uh, this is 18-year-old skier Roman Sibalenko. Oh. Sorry, we take that back. It is Jinro Kirikubo of Japan. The Japanese, after just a couple of days, were leading the medal count here at the World University Games, but we're just a few days in to see if anything changes here in the coming days, over the weekend, possibly. Kirikubo a second and a half behind Zabastran. He raced a series of technical events on the FIS calendar in December in Japan. Almost two seconds behind at the second timing point. Oh, Belenko from... Almost two and a half seconds behind is Kurakubo, the 20-year-old from Japan. As we approach just our final handful of skiers before the event comes to an end. Elise Cretin of France from Les Menuir. Three podium results this season in fist races. At the young age of 20. Uh, we have we have uh, an unfortunate occurrence. There is Cretan. He has lost a ski. And his work is over early here today at Whiteface Mountain. He's okay. That's a good sign. But again, there are a lot more skiing to be done over the next week. So these skiers will put this away, good or bad, and come out again on another day. Well, we get a look at it here. Oh, almost, you no, know, I think with, with not so much pressure on the outside ski that the ski and that binding just uh, did not play well together and that, that binding popped open. A little chattery up there too could have led to that uh, occurring. Zabastran the leader, second place Taranzano, Weiler third, Drukarov and Perkins finishing the top five. 
Uh, looks Clearly, like everybody is uh, and congratulating like in themselves and uh, very happy. Uh, it's possible that this will be the final three, or the top three, I should say, but it's uh, not official yet. But it will take some kind of superlative effort to uh, knock any of these three out of the perch that they currently occupy. From Spain, Jonas Sanchez Cabanas, 18 years of age. He has three victories in fist races, but he is known more for his technical capabilities, not so much the speed events. Here's Cabanas. Okay, he got by that uh, trap door, that red gate that's claimed a few today. Of course, up there could be getting a bit on the rough side. It's very possible after so many skiers, even though the surface is firm. Not easy skiing in the back of the pack. No question about that. We certainly don't benefit from the primo conditions, that's for sure. Two, two seconds out is the Spanish skier. It's really good here. And so this is a final Sanchez time of a minute, 1.22 22 seconds. 33rd place for Jonas Sanchez Cabanas. Final few skiers of the event. Takayuki Koyama, 21, from Nihon University near Tokyo. He's won three times in fist races. And he's tackling now upper throughway. Almost 1.8 seconds behind Zabastran standard up there. Koyama, a total of 10 podiums in his FIS career. Got a little bit airborne at that red gate. Now, but no problem, and he's in done in a minute, 1.9 seconds. 37th, time, 37th place, three and a half seconds behind. Austrian, Jan Rohner. 20 years. that red gate that has taken its toll as I've said and also sent some people low on the way to the next gate. Rohner battling here. He's just battling to get through this now and give him credit for that. Three seconds behind at the timing point. Jan Rohner is going to complete the Super G in one minute, 2.24 seconds. 39th place. Time of the day with a 102.24 out of the 48 start. As we get to our final skier of the race from Japan, Rion Takeuchi. He attends the Nippon Sports Science University in Tokyo. He 
Whoa, almost, the red gate. The little house of horrors there today. But he negotiates it, gets through it. And again, at this point in the field, conditions are not, not the best, obviously, as the first 15 had. Still very good because it's, it's firm up there and equitable. Uh, but it is a battle. It can be a battle from the back of the pack. Takeuchi about to finish his Super G race here at Whiteface Mountain at the World University Games. And In a minute, 2.55 seconds. 40th, 40th position. As for the, Japanese the field now has been completed. The 49 racers up. We have them all down the mountain now, but I'll tell you the day belongs We're happy to the that the race, race has been held and uh, everyone is safe, of course. That's number one. And here are our medal winners. Second split 44.70 and the last fastest combined time 58.35. Jan Zabastrand wins the gold. He's going to be our champion today. The day belongs to Jan Zabastrand, ladies and gentlemen, from the Czech Republic. He's going to take home the gold medal here today. We ask that you and stay He wins by four tenths of a second. Presentation to our top three finishers here just about five minutes from now. Of course, our uh, presenter today is going to be New York State Senator. Now it's time Don to get the Stott. course ready for Don the women Sierra later today. Uh, Italy's Luca Taranzano, silver medalist. Uh, the bronze goes to Eric Weiler of Switzerland. From Lithuania, fourth place, Andre Drukarov. A great race for him. Tanner Perkins had a good showing for the United States. We'll have the, uh, the mascot ceremony here coming up shortly. Tonight, the medals will be awarded at the festival on Main Street in Lake Placid at Mids Park. So if you're in the neighborhood, you can walk over. Uh, most of Main Street is a pedestrian thoroughfare, so it's uh, very nice just to browse through and stop by, enjoy not only the medals, but the activities that the public can participate in and the live musical entertainment as well. Looking at the entire uh, results list here, Jan Zabastran gets the job done from the Czech Republic. He wins the race, and it was very good among among those uh, among that first group. Here's Weiler from Switzerland. Pretty good around that. Okay. 
And then after that last picture is taken, then what we'll do is we'll have one of the, the hosts that will get you guys and we'll walk back out the exact same way we come. Good to go? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I am just doing what you're doing before. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I have <laughs> We're getting ready now for the mascot ceremony. Officially recognizing our gold, silver, and bronze medal winners here in the first race of uh, a long week of racing here at Whiteface Mountain. And uh, this was exciting. It was very good. Great to welcome the world to uh, the Adirondack region uh, of upstate New York. Jan Zabastrand, despite a mistake that might have cost somebody else, didn't cost him. And he skis himself to the gold medal. Taranzano and Weiler will join him on the podium. A little bit later today, we will have the first women's race, the Super G, starting at 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Time here in the United States. And we're awaiting just the last of the logistical details to be put together on the mascot ceremony. And Eric Weiler, there he is. There's the bronze medalist from Switzerland. The Swiss team is benefiting uh, among its coaches here. Longtime men's World Cup coach Carl Fresner. And anytime you can tap into that kind of knowledge and experience, it certainly is helpful for the young skiers. And maybe this is a result of that. Luca Taranzano from Italy wins the silver medal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, finishing in first place, and the champion for the men's Super G, representing the Czech Republic. Put your hands together for Jan Zabistran. Zabistran, the gold medalist from the Czech Republic. And these three athletes will be at Mids Park for the medal ceremony tonight. And they'll get to celebrate this Ladies all over again. Here are Zabastran gets Adirondack Mac. From the Lake Placid 2023. And that is the mass. And actually, all three get Adirondack Mac. Super G. This, is a, this is a very neat experience for these athletes. And I was talking to a lot of them uh, during the training on, uh, on Wednesday. We had such a beautiful day here. Everybody was just smiles great snow and blue sky and um, I think in some cases I, I don't think some of the athletes maybe understood the enormity the magnitude the platform that this presents uh, they were just out here doing what they do ski train enjoy it all but I think now it dawns on them they see the venues dressed up they see all the pomp and circumstance you get that experience of the opening ceremony and then at that moment, that's when it all strikes home that this is bigger than maybe anything I possibly have ever done earlier. And now we have a, a, a wonderful race here to start the competition at Whiteface Mountain and uh, a good looking uh, top three, if you will, um, to cap this morning. And again, you can join these three tonight at the medal ceremony a lot, along with many activities and 
musical entertainment and the, the whole festival atmosphere that is Main Street, Lake Placid, uh, from now until right through next weekend. So that brings us to the conclusion of, well, part of day number one. We'll take a little break. Course crew will do what it does here to get ready for the women's race this afternoon. And we'll congratulate Zabistran, Taranzano, and Weiler. And uh, we will thank you for joining us here from Whiteface Mountain near Lake Placid. And uh, we hope you'll take a, a little break yourselves, whether it's a dinner break or a lunch break, and join us at 1 o'clock Eastern time for the Women's Super G with a field of 34 athletes and should be just as exciting. That'll do it for now. Sandy Calajori from Whiteface Mountain at the World University Games Alpine Skiing Events, bidding you, for the moment, so long.